Hello everybody and welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. So today we are unboxing a really cool car. This is the Nissan Bluebird 1600 SS or as we knew it over here in North America as the Datsun 510. This is a Hasegawa kit and it's going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So down on our bench we have the Nissan Bluebird 1600 SSS P510 WTK from 1969. This is one of the historic car series number 8 from Hasegawa. And here you can see the wonderful red car with the four doors and those awesome old Datsun hubcaps that they had on here. So again, like I was saying, it was known as a Datsun 510 over here in Canada and the USA. So as we look at this side of the box, we can see the wonderful side view of our model car. And here we have a three quarter front view. And moving along, we also have some details on the kit. As in, this is a 124 scale model kit. The length is 172 millimeters and the width is 66 millimeters. It has 66 pieces and some stuff in Japanese that I can't understand. So as we open the lid on our Nissan Bluebird, we get to take a look at the great parts inside. Here we have the body molded in a red plastic, which is a bit unfortunate. It would be nice if it was molded in white plastic. And then in this bag, we've got our clear and chrome parts as well as a decal sheet. Getting in here, we have all the black plastic pieces in one convenient bag, including the tires. And last but not least, we have our instruction sheet. So what we'll do next is open this up and see how to put it together. To begin our assembly, we're taking a look at panel one. And what we have here is the shift knob and it says to apply the little shift gate decal right on top of the stick. So that's always cool. And it also shows the direction for forward. So you want the stick leaning back as uh, you're going up against that dashboard. So the shifter lever will go in here. You got a nice wonderful interior tub. You also have a back seat and two bucket seats in the front. So as we get into step two, we see our dashboard assembly going in here with our dashboard, our steering column and our steering wheel. We also have some more decal application here. So going down on the dashboard, we have these decals, number 15 for the vents left and right. We also have a color for our dashboard. And then here we have decal 9, decal 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. And that will really spruce up your dashboard. Now, one thing, if you want to make this a, like a North American style left hand drive, you will need to carefully cut out in here and cut out your glove box and switch the two locations on here. This is a lot easier to do because as you'll see when we look at the dashboard, they are quite rectangular and the same kind of rectangle it looks like. So if you want to change it, you can easily do that this way. You'll also have to make a little notch on this side of the dashboard just to lock in the steering column right there. And also on the steering wheel, we have a decal that goes in the center. And here's some more paint around the edge. And then all that will glue into these notches right here. Now we'll get into the front suspension installation. One thing I want to let you know is back in the day, my sister had a Datsun 510 and my dad's house had a pit in the garage, which looks like this. So with that pit, we were able to actually take the Datsun 510 and roll it over the top and climb underneath by lifting up all the planks and seeing what was underneath the car. And we had to do that because my sister's floor was rusted in the back here. So my dad made some new floors out of sheet metal and pop riveted them in into place. Now, the one thing we did see underneath is that this Datsun 510 copied the British style suspension under here from like a Jaguar or something. And it has an independent rear axle, which we'll take a look at in step four down here. But what we have up front is the McPherson strut mechanisms. So there's the spring and the shock absorber all into here. And then down below you have the steering uh, kingpins, I guess. And then here you've got your rack. Oh, that's a anti-sway bar up there. Here's your rack and pinion steering. 
and then there's this little subframe which drops in. Now in this kit, the engine, transmission, and drive shaft are molded as one piece. And here you can see the front, right, and left hand side suspensions. You glue this little piece right in here, that's to lock it in on the, the uh, chassis. Here we have step four, and you can see this independent rear axle. This is very much like the Jaguar style. Corvette also copied this. Although here it's got these A-arms back here like this. That's quite different from the Corvette, which has a semi-elliptical spring up here. But all this mounts down. We also have two shock absorbers, which go on these little pins back here. And the position is facing forward to the front of the car, having the shock absorbers leaning backward. And here we have this nice little muffler with a little metal piece on the end, which pops in. Now I'm not sure if this is going to be a chrome piece or an actual metal piece. We'll see once we take a look at our parts. Panel 5 is where everything starts to get together. So here we have the interior tub, or as Hasegawa is calling it, the cockpit. And the cockpit will mount onto the completed chassis in these four little holes. So there's pins underneath here. And then what we have here is the painting chart for our hubcaps. And these are actually hubcaps, although they look like mag wheels on here, but they're not. So we have our tire, which pushes onto our wheel. And then we have our neoprene bushing, which will go in here. This is the wheel retainer. And then we also have these little disc brakes, both front and rear. So you're making four sets of these wheels. And the nice thing about the neoprene is you do not need to glue it it will actually expand a little bit and get locked right into the hub here once you push it onto the axle pins. Now we get into step number six and here we have our front grille. This has a little bit of flat black wash in here and if you want to learn more about washes in your grills check out this video right here. So we have these sport mirrors and again because this is a Japanese version they do mount at the edge of the front fenders Usually in the North American version, these little rear view mirrors would be mounted right into the door right there on the front doors. So we have our grill. Here it shows the headlights being glued into place. And uh, it would be nice if there was a decal in here, but there is not. And then we have our front turn signals, left and right. Look at they call it the left winker. <laughs> Okay, we got our right winker and our left winker, and not to be confused with a wanker. Anyway, uh, and then we have our windshield wipers right here and here. And we also have our front bumper and our license plate. That one was <laughs> kind of funny there. And then we got our front windshield and we also have our rear view mirror. Step seven, we have the C-pillar emblem. That's what they're calling this little piece, glues on right there. And then in the back, we have our tail lamps. Now this is the whole painting chart, so it shows which colors go in here and here. Probably a red in the middle and amber on the right and left hand side. It's been a long time since I've seen my sister's Datsun 510. She actually had to get rid of the car back in the 90s. So here we have our three-piece tail lights. We also have our license plate going in place and our rear bumper, as well as this little piece here, which could be a backup light. I'm not 100% sure I remember that on her car, but there it all is. In panel 8, we get the body installation. And how many of you remember these old antennas where you can pull them up from the top here to extend them out? And they mounted right on the front windshield post. Yeah, these are great. Uh, but I remember the GM one in my uh, 72 Oldsmobile is actually in the glass and comes up and one wire goes there and the other one comes up here. But this is like the older style with the actual pull-out antenna. So to get your body together here, there are tabs on the chassis which go into little holes or little, uh, what would you call them, uh, little areas up in front of the car here. And you would pop in the back, or well it says this is the assembly order, so it goes in the front first and then you pry the back out a little bit and pop that into place. And then here we have rocker panel moldings right here and here, which will go along the bottom edge of the car. Our back panel here shows the markings and paintings. So these are all for the decals along the side of the car and what colors to paint. I do believe this would be silver, as well as some chrome trim up here and other great things. There's those nice hubcaps, just like how my sister had it. And here's the view from the top, which again shows more of the colors and the paint that you're going to add in here. 
And here it also has the rear window defroster which is molded into the rear glass. Here we have the driver's side of the car in Japan or the passenger side in North America depending on how you want to look at this. And it also shows all the little placements for your decals as well as the colors to paint in here. And this side actually has the gas filler door on here with a little chrome lock. And then we've got the front of the car with the Bluebird license plate right there. And then the back of the car as well with the Bluebird license plate. One thing that's interesting, it says this paint scheme diagram has been reduced to 85% of 124 scale. So what scale would that be then? 132nd scale maybe? For the drawings? I don't know. Let us know in the comments down below. And just to wrap up, one thing that is nice about this Fujimi instruction sheet is right down here it gives you all the parts trees and what you're going to expect to see on them. And we can just move this across as well. And you can see it continues on here with the tires and the decals and everything else, as well as the paint charts here. And I'm not really sure which ones this would be, maybe Hasegawa, or sorry, not Hasegawa, um, Mr. Hobby or one of those ones. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It says for Japanese youth, <laughs> for Japanese use only, and that's all written in Japanese and everything. <laughs> so we won't know what this says over here in North America. As I was folding up the instruction sheet, I actually turned this to the back and I noticed something here. It's got all these uh, little drawings. This is how to apply your decals on the decal sheet. So it says cut each design out of decal sheet and dip them in warm water for 20 seconds. And then you, you know, slide them off, right? But look at this here. It says featured in the video and then it's got a QR code right here. So I will zoom in on this QR code and you guys can take a picture of it with your cell phones off of this YouTube video and see what it looks like on the uh, Hasegawa website. All right, so there it is. Click on it. And if it works, let me know down in the comment section below, because this is like new technology we're going to attempt to use here. Getting the QR code to work off of a YouTube video, which is off of the instructions. So if it works, let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and then send me the link. Post the link to this. Copy and paste it into the comments so I can watch the video too. Here we have the wonderful hard plastic body of our Datsun 510 model kit. Our Nissan Bluebird, whatever you want to call this thing. So there we've got the hood molded in place. So that again would make an excellent little slot car body if you're racing 124 scale and you want something small and fast, it'd be kind of cool. So here it is. There's a lot of static electricity on this kit when I took it out of the bag. So everything kind of sucked on there. But take a look at the nice detail in here. You get the little gas filler door, the door handles, little holes to add in those little side vents on the C pillar. So we have our A pillar, our B pillar, and our C pillar, just so you guys know. There's a little teeny hole here to mount that antenna in place. One thing that is a little bit of uh, irritation in here is there's this big post right up there on the roof. Now you can clip that out with your side cutters, but uh, it might be a little tricky to get into the bottom. Again, use that number 16 hobby blade. But taking a look over here again, this is much like that Toyota Corolla I did a while ago. I think last week even. And uh, here it's got a little ridge line right underneath the hood that you can easily take care of. But there are no big visible mold, mold <laughs> sorry, mold marks like on some of the AMT and monogram kits and that sort of thing. So that's a real bonus. The front end looks nice. You could put a big custom grill in there too if you wanted to, because there's nothing interfering in the front end. And turning it off to the back, again, you can see the back end in here. Very nicely done. Again, much of a copy of a British style car, but that's what made these 510s really cool. So here we're going to take a look at our highly detailed chassis, our chassis, as I like to call it. I call these chassises. No, they're chassis. All right, anyway. So what we have here is, I mean, look at how great this is. This is nice clean crisp molding not a lot of like high-end detail in here but it does get the job done and that's what we want we want our jobs done not partially done but fully done so there's six mounting points one in the front one in the rear and then four off the sides so once you clip those with your side cutters 
it should be very easy to just clean with a little bit of sandpaper along the edges. So what we have here is our nice little four-cylinder engine with the transmission and the drive shaft running up the middle. And then here we have our exhaust as well, most of it. We also need the tailpipe and the rear muffler, which will come in later. And right here is the spare tire mount, as well as a little toolbox area in here, which would be up under the floorboards. Now let's bring this up into the camera where we can take a look at the wonderful detail in here. Just look at how cool that engine is. It even has the motor mounts off the side, which look like great big blocks. <laughs> I don't know if that's intentional or just the way they molded this. Turning it over, these are the holes for the mounting of the interior. And then we also have the holes up here for the tops of McPherson struts and the shock absorbers in here, as well as the uh, independent suspension mounting points up in the back and some for the cross braces and whatnot up in the front. So again, simplistic, but it will get the job done and make for a really nice curbside display model. Here's our next parts tree, which includes the dashboard, as well as the rack and pinion steering, our steering wheel and the steering column. And here's our wonderful looking gear shift lever. That looks really cool. We also have our seat and our interior tub right here. And we've got our rear muffler. We also have the anti-sway bar up front and the lower A-arm, or the lower mounting point, I guess, for the front McPherson strut steering. And then here we have the rear independent axle. There is some dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun flash! Ah! Dun-dun-dun! Flash! Right there. So you'll need to remove it. And uh, that was just for Peter. He reminded me that I did that in some older videos, so I thought I'd do it again. Now here we actually do have inner door panels, which is quite nice. Sadly, I can't remember what my sister's inner door panels on her 510 look like. So I'm just going to have to look up a random Datsun 510 online. Now you can see sort of mold marks, but they look like they're actually coming up from underneath. And there they are there, mold marks up underneath. So that's a little bit interesting. I haven't actually seen something like that in a kit before. But here is the mounting area for the rear seat. Again with flash. Uh-uh. Right there. Actually, there is quite a bit of flash on this uh, punching. But overall, I mean, it's nothing you can't clean up with a half round file or sandpaper. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with the dashboard. If you want to make this uh, left hand drive like over in Canada, North America and some other countries you could I don't know how easy this would be but flip your number 16 hobby blade over and come down here, go across there keep etching it until this falls out and then do the same over here and then just reverse it to so this one goes on this side and this goes over here and that should give you the left hand side dashboard so again, there it is there. Although you could just pretend you're in Japan or England or Australia even, and just keep it the way it is. I think I'm gonna do that with this kit just to, you know, to, to avoid frustration. Uh, and then there's our gear shift lever. That looks really cool. It's, it's actually like sitting on a disc inside there. So again, really cool stuff. I do like how Fujimi did this. I also like this rear axle here. I mean, look at how cool that is. I know my colors aren't really showing up too well of the plastic tonight, but it is dark outside and I've got some lamps pointed at this this uh, spruce, so I don't know just how great it's coming out, but overall this is how it looks, and I think it looks pretty good. Now here's something Hasegawa did, which I think is actually kind of clever from a tooling point of view for uh, like machining up the big tools that make these models. Look at this. This is the uh, sprue marked with the letter J. And so is this. So what they've done is they've just made one sprue, really, and uh, it's the J sprue. So by using that one piece here and mounting it on the McPherson struts in a different location, there, there's a McPherson strut. So by mounting it like this way, pointing down into the table, you get like the right hand 
or something, or maybe the left hand. And by taking the same piece and bringing it up this way, you get the right hand. And then look at the seats. Of course, the seats are also like not left and right hand, but they're sort of one type of seat. So you just put one on the right hand side and one on the left. And then you've got the two disc brakes for one for the front, one for the rear. And then on the duplicate parts tree, oh yeah, one shock absorber, one McPherson strut, one license plate. So by duplicating these parts, you get the front and rear license plate, left and right hand seat, left and right hand side McPherson strut, left and right hand side rear shock, and front left and right hand side disc brake, and rear left and right hand side disc brake. So pretty clever actually. We do have two mold marks right at the top of that seat, but you can easily fill and sand those out. And a couple little mold marks here and there, which again, you can easily sand down. The nice part is the parts are flat, so it'd make it quite easy to do so. But overall, I mean, that's really a smart way to do it. What would you guys think? If you were a big model kit manufacturer, is that the way you would want to do it? Or maybe even a 3D printer guy. You could learn something out of this too. 3D print this one thing twice if you're designing a model car for everybody using your computer. Now we're going to look at our chrome components and Hasego has actually given us four chrome trees which we'll take a look at as we go through here. So this one includes the front grille. Again a nice black wash in here will bring out the details. Then we have our front and rear bumper and these little pads right there and there there's four of them. Those would be painted flat black to represent rubber as well. And then here we have the grill, I do believe. And these are the little ones that go up on those C pillars. Or maybe these are the turn, rear turn signal lamps. I think that's what they are. Yeah, that's what they are, because this is the grill. <laughs> okay, anyway. So take a look at that nice detail on there. Looks like the real thing, only smaller. Interesting that it's got the quad headlights sort of flashing back to a 50s kind of car. 50s American. And then there's the little sides there. Again, I do believe they copied more of a British car in here, so I'm not quite sure which uh, English cars would have this front grille. If you know, let us know in the comments down below. But again, really nice, and the chrome is really nice on here too. And there is no flash. Next up we have our chrome trim and chrome emblems part sprue. So these are going along the rocker panels along the side. We have our rear view mirror. We also have chrome sports mirrors, which are really cool. And then here we've got the center section of our rear tail lamps, as well as the little uh, detail that goes along the trunk lid. Then here we've got chrome windshield wipers. There's that antenna again, as well as the tailpipe extension and uh, Oh, that must be that little backup light thing that was on the rear bumper. So again, nice detailing on here. This part is really nicely done with the little lines in it. And then there's the little tailpipe extension right there. Goes on the end of the muffler. Flipping it over, a couple little mold marks along here. But again, this is a side that goes into the car. So unless these are sticking up and interfering, you could basically leave them clean. Remember to scrape off the chrome plating where you're going to be gluing on part to part. You want bare plastic contact. That's always the way to make these parts stay on the car forever. And here's our last two chrome parts trees. Now you'll notice Hasegawa did it again. They actually just made one part tree and duplicated it twice in the kit. So this is part tree W for a winner. <laughs> anyway, but again, look at those nice wheels on there. Now these are hubcaps on the real car. My sister had them. And turning over again, you've got that nice deep circular well in here. That's where the neoprene bushing will pop into place. And what I would recommend is, you see how there's those mold marks around there? I would just take this and rub it on a bit of sandpaper just to get rid of those sink marks and mold marks in there and make that back of the wheel nice and flat. Another thing to do is to get flat black paint and just paint on the inside of this because the real wheel wasn't chrome plated. That's just for the hum hub caps on here, which actually the hub caps were aluminum or um, like a metal color. So again, really nicely done by Hasegawa and these will really dress up your car kit. Here we have the clear glass components of our little Datsun 510 or Bluebird or Bluebird 510, however you want to go about this. Okay, so here's our windshield and just like the Fujimi Toyota of mine, 
This one also has the rolled up side windows, so this will give you the complete glass bird cage, which is really, I think, in some ways it's better because you're not getting dust in your interior, but in other ways it's not because you can't really, like if you detail up your dashboard really nicely, sometimes you get distortion when you're trying to look at him through the side with these windows. So overall though, it's still quite nice. Now here we have the front little turn signal lights and the back ones and all the rest. And we also have our headlights. And if I bring this up to the camera here, you'll notice there is a crosshatch pattern in here. Now you really want to be careful with these to get them going north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. So what I've done here is, let's just zoom in on this. This is what I'm talking about if you are constantly wondering what I'm saying, north and south, east and west, what does that mean? So here, you've got your compass, right? And you've got your compass points. Here's north south, east, west. So what I'm saying is this is what headlights are supposed to be looking like when they're in their car. So you're going north and south, so that's these lines here, and east and west, which is these lines here. What you don't want is these things going off at angles like this. So that would mean your compass here would be like this in the car. And you don't want it pointing off like that or, you know, like at any weird angle. So you're you're either going like this with north or you're going like that <laughs> with north. You don't want any of that. You want it to be up and down, nor, never eat shredded wheat, right? So that's how you want it. This is the way you want it. So that's what I'm referring to every time I say, make sure you get these headlights going in there, north and, north and south, east and west, and not like that. Here we have our tires as well as our neoprene wheel retainers. So what you would do is cut these off here, 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 and here, and then carefully put them into your wheel in there and then push the axle in, and these will expand and push up against the sides, trapping the pin in the hole and expanding the wheel onto the bushing, I guess you'd call it. So yeah, that's the way to do it. What I would do is cut off one at a time. Don't cut off all four, just in case you lose one off of the tree. So I'll move this out of the way here. So these are Dunlop SF3s. And that's what I can see on the writing on the side of the tire. They are actually made out of real rubber because when you open it, you can really smell the rubber in there. Look at the nice tread pattern on here. Really wonderful stuff. Does have a seam line up the middle. So your wheel retainer tool as well as some sandpaper in your electric drill will get rid of that. Uh, if you want to know how to do tires, check out this video scrolling across here. And now let's move on to our decal sheet. Here we have our decal sheet for our Nissan Bluebird 1600 SSS P510WTK from 1969. Good thing it was written there. All right, so we've got our Bluebird license plates here, which you can put on the front of the car. We also have decals for those little chrome pieces on our C-pillars, and there's one for the front grille, as well as a side script, or actually I think that's on the trunk lid. These are the side scripts. And then here we have all our gauges for our dashboard, as well as these window stickers. I don't, I've never seen this over here in Canada, so I think these are registration tags from Japan. I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. We also have the little vent decals on here for the front of the dashboard. Now I have seen numerous Japanese license plates in very different kits, so you could also use those if you want numbers and make it street legal, or put on North American decals from some of your uh, decal collection, or whatever you choose really, it's all up to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where we got to take a look at the old Datsun 510, or as they like to call it in Japan, the Nissan Bluebird 1600. 
One thing cool about this car is it's a four door, so if you're into four doors or need some for your dioramas or whatever, this is a good car for you. Don't forget to check out all our model car kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca or I've got another website actually that I sell the model cars on and that's one that gets hooked into my YouTube channel and that is my Shopify account which is Monster Hobbies Online. So you can get these same great model cars from now two online stores. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, until next time everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck on your builds and happy model building. We'll see you in the next video.